hello let's start with the problem second largest element okay so in this problem let's see uh, let's first read the problem statement so the problem statement here says given an array arr return the second largest element second largest distinct element from an array okay and if the second largest element doesn't exist then we have to return negative one the question is quite simple uh, you can see this array present here so in this array uh, having all these values we have two values marked okay in this diagram i have marked this one as yellow well this one is actually the largest but do we need to return the largest no we are looking for the second largest in this case 12 35 1 10 34 and 1 the largest will be 35 and the second largest would be 34 so in this case the answer should be 34 okay let's see a couple more sample cases taking a look at these sample cases you can see this is the first one which i've already shown you in this one you can see three elements are there uh, 10 5 and 5 now your largest element here is 10 but the point to note here is actually there is two occurrences of 10 okay this one and this one so the actual answer is going to be 5 because that is the next greater element or the second greater element okay in this case 5 is going to be the answer now talking about this situation when you have all the numbers same you cannot find out that what will be the second largest because three elements are present here and all of the three are same okay so 10 is the greatest 10 is the smallest you cannot say that uh, there is any second largest number okay so in this case as the question demands we have to return negative one let's start with the approaches of this question well the very first approach that comes to everyone's mind is that uh, why shouldn't we just sort this array and uh, return the second last element or uh, better said second last unique element that is also a way right so that is what we are going to do here assuming this is my array this is my given array i've modified it a little with uh, with addition of this 35 so that we get clear with this corner case as well okay first of all we sort all the elements so after sorting i get this list okay i have 1 1 10 12 34 35 and 35 so in the case had it been all the unique elements you simply can return the second the second last index but in this case and as the question demands the repetitions are allowed and you like there is no surety that the second largest uh, the second index from the last is going to be the required element so what do we have to do we have to find out that whatsoever element is actually unique when we travel from the last and we encounter that we need to return that one okay so in our case 35 is the biggest element till the repetitions of 35 we are going to move and the moment we find an element which is other than 35 we are going to return that element okay so this approach is quite simple right you don't have to put many efforts here and here in this case as you can see uh, we have reached here once we analyze its complexity then we realize that we are doing so much unnecessary work right because we are also taking care of all the elements here which actually we don't need to be sorted right uh, we don't need that to be sorted that is some extra work that we are putting so that should be avoided right complexity analysis is going to be n log n using any of the best uh, sorting algorithms it is going to cost you n log n complexity along with that once you're performing this check okay the worst case could be like all of them are 35 and the last one is 34 or in the case that uh, which we encountered in which all the elements are same okay those are going to be the worst cases for us and we might have to travel n times in this direction as well right so this is going to be the complexity keeping up the major element n log n we can say n log n uh, big o of n log n is going to be the time complexity of this approach we are not using any extra space here so o1 is going to be it's a space complexity moving ahead to the next approach so we have to go for something better because the question itself demands that uh, that our solution should be in order of n okay this should be the time complexity and o1 should be the space complexity let's try how near can we get to this in this approach approach 2 we can use two iterations here okay in first iteration we can find out the maximum we very well are aware of how we find maximum in one single iteration assuming this is our array 
what what i'll do in my first uh, iteration is i'll find out which is the maximum value so let's say i found out that okay 35 is the maximum value i'm going to perform another iteration but this time i'm going to find the maximum value that shouldn't be equal to 35 okay should be equal to uh, or we can say that okay it is going to be less than 35 biggest value less than 35 now once we do this iteration we come to know okay this value is 34 and this second iteration we can find out our answer which is 34 okay well now analyzing its complexity we did first iteration here another iteration here so it is going to be order of 2n okay in, in the order of n uh, the complexity would be bigger of 2n the thing is we are iterating two times although right even though it is going to be considered order of n can we do something better to it because i feel like two iterations can be avoided right so even though this solution can also be accepted and 2n is a perfectly valid solution but let's discuss uh, even you know like a better approach to it in which we can do all of this work in just one single iteration okay that is where our next approach comes in this one and it is going to tell you that how we are going to do this question in just one single iteration this is again a sample uh, that we are doing the first point is what do we have to do we have to look for the maximum and we have to keep track of the previous updated value and the second maximum value okay what do i mean by that let's try to do it what do we do when we keep track of maximum let's say i have created one variable max uh, initially it is going to be negative infinity because the moment we are going to encounter any bigger value i'm going to update this right so beginning the iteration i got 12 in the first run 12 is going to be a maximum till here right i moved ahead okay now i encountered 35 so now 35 is a bigger value than 12 in this what will i do is i'll just update 35 right and i'll keep on doing this to find the maximum but i do have to keep the track of the previous value as well so the value that i've cancelled right now which is 12 i will keep the track of it let me call it the second number okay i'm going to keep the track of it here there are two conditions for this second number first of all we have to keep the track of the uh, previous updated value also the ith value that we are dealing with right now is 35 the ith value that we are dealing with we need to check that it should be the second maximum that means if i encounter a value which is less than this less than the maximum but still is bigger than the previous one i'm going to update that okay let's complete the iteration you will get to know what i'm trying to say i move to one well neither my max is going to be updated nor the second variable is going to hold another value going to 10 here now here you can see max is not being updated and my second max is also not being updated i went to 34 well this time my max is not going to be updated because 34 is not a bigger value but the moment you see second you see okay that 34 might not be bigger than the maximum but it is actually bigger than the second that we hold and it is less than maximum so it is one of the possible answers so i'm going to keep the track of it going to one here nothing changed going to 35 here nothing changed eventually once my iteration is done this second variable is going to be holding my answer so now complexity analysis of this how many iterations have we taken well, we did our work in one single iteration right so the complexity that it is going to be taking is time complexity would be order of n what is going to be the space complexity well instead of one variable we are using two variables but there is you know like no consideration of an array or any data structure that we are using to solve our problem which grows it doesn't so the space complexity is going to be order of one right I hope you have clearly understood this problem. Let's see the code of it. Okay. So I have kept the code here for you. The last approach is discussed here. I have kept this case here because if the length of our array is less than two, then surely we cannot find the second largest element, right? In that case, I'm simply going to return minus one without any calculation. Then I've created two variables, first and second, just to keep the track of maximum and the second value. Initially, I have uh, kept negative infinity in that and then after like after that i have started performing my traversal so every time i'm going to take a new value that will be stored in num and i'll be checking that if num is bigger than the first aka maximum then i'm going to perform this 
keeping the track of the previous value, updating the first one. Okay. Else, if, if that is not the case, then I have to also check that my num or the ith value is uh, bigger than the second and it is not equal to the first. If that is the case, I can update second here. Quite simple. Eventually, I'm saying that if I have done or if I have made any updation to my second variable, so initially it just started with negative infinity, I'm checking that if it is still negative infinity and uh, have not changed any value so far in the iteration, I'm going to return minus one, which signifies I have not found uh, the second largest element here. But if that is not the case, otherwise I would be having my answer stored in this variable. Thus, I'm returning second which the question actually requires okay now let's just uh, quickly run this code and pass it against all the test cases well here's the code let's try to first compile and see if it is working fine okay so it is giving us the expected output for the sample test case let's try it against all the hidden test cases okay so it has passed all of the test cases here so i hope you have clearly understood this problem now if you have any doubt try rewatching it and just Give it a dry run once yourself and then the approach would be completely clear to you. Thank you.